Hey what's up you guys, it's Nicholas Lionrider, and if you're on my channel, you are likely familiar with the game known as Prehistoric Kingdom. It's the next big tycoon game that's been on everyone's horizons in the community, and as the name suggests, it's actually a prehistoric zoo tycoon. So I thought I'd make today's video to kind of go over what Prehistoric Kingdom is if anyone isn't familiar with the game, and give some reasons why this game may or may not be the right game for you. So without further ado, let's get started. So if those of you aren't familiar with Prehistoric Kingdom, it is a brand new game from the indie studio Blue Meridian. Originally, they were formerly known as Shadow Raven Studios, but that has since changed. And they're basically a group of individuals from around the world who have been working for almost a decade now on different forms of dinosaur games and specifically Prehistoric Kingdom, which is supposed to be a roughly spiritual successor to games like Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but since then has kind of evolved to take a lot of inspiration from a lot more recent games. The game is absolutely gorgeous and it displays its inspirations really proudly and prominently. There's callbacks to Jurassic Park, Prehistoric Park, and if you look at their website and stuff, there's a couple of other games from a <coughs> another studio that are um, pretty prominent in their marketing campaigns. So, um, yeah. So, there you go. And I know a lot of other Planet Zoo YouTubers have already kind of jumped ship. They're already gone. They already went, by Planet Zoo, we're going on the PK hype train. Doo doo, whoa, here we go, whoa. Everyone's migrating over. We want, because, and that's why I wanted to make this video. Because I know a lot of people are on the hype train. Woohoo! Here we go, PK. And at the end of the day, I get it. There's a lot of perks for Prehistoric Kingdom that on a base level seem like it's going to be, you know, it's, it's Planet Zoo, but better. It's got scaling, Nick. It's got modding. Oh my god, it's going to be the greatest thing that's ever happened. And the point of this video was not to dial back, like, if you're excited for this game, of course, but to kind of rein in your expectations if you're expecting something, especially very soon. Because I know very shortly we are going to be seeing a lot of content creators getting early access to this game, which, as I've mentioned, you're technically getting a demo of pre-pre-alpha of their early access of this game. This game is still years off from release. At the end of this year, or maybe like quarter two or three, we will be seeing the early access of the game, which is only going to have roughly 22 dinosaurs, or 22 animals, I should say, because there's a couple of non-dinosaurs. And your basic functionality, you know, building, path placement, etc. But if you're looking for some of the stuff that was originally on their Kickstarter back in 2018, stuff like the uh, ranger mode or animal breeding or uh, a lot of the Cenozoic animals. I know a lot of people are like, I'm going to make a giant sloth build. I'm going to make a, um, you know, a bear build and stuff. I don't believe those animals are planned for early access. To my knowledge, the only three Cenozoic animals planned for early access are the woolly mammoth, the Smilodon or Sabertooth Cat, and the Woolly Rhino, if I'm not mistaken. So that is a thing you need to take into consideration if you're thinking short term. If you're a creator or a fan of these types of games, and you are looking for a huge animal roster with a ton of features and stuff, you are still a few years off, unfortunately. like. Uh, if you're one of those people that's like, oh my god, I saw the Kickstarter, they're gonna have diving and marine animals and pterodactyls and flying and stuff, that, yeah, th that is all still in the works, but it's still a ways off. And so I think you need to really kind of look at what the game is in its current state. And so that's why I've, you know, like I said, created this video. So, what does the game have? In its current state, to our knowledge, this demo of our early access that a lot of these creators are going to get will have your uh, standard exhibit creation. So you're going to be able to create exhibits, place down fences, place down paths, and there will be some modular pieces with scaling and flexi color, etc. Now, I know there's a lot of creators and stuff 
out there that are mentioning like I'm everything's piece by piece everything is which isn't necessarily true if you read their uh Kickstarter and their website and stuff they very explicitly say not everything is these kind of customization heavy features there are still placeable buildings and stuff like restaurants or gift shops or maintenance sheds and transformers and stuff like that. Those are pre-built objects. And whether or not you're able to truly customize those using modular pieces or scaling and stuff has yet to be seen. There's very few footage out there as of right now of what the current state of the game is. I think Swerve is the only content creator really that has some of the more recent build and the build he's shown off still are very you know they they should really show off your expectations properly because there is you know you can make some nice habitats that's for sure like if you wanted to play with rock work and fences and stuff great but to this day i don't think there has been anything like a rudy rankamel style giant build for prehistoric kingdom just yet and Maybe we will see that once content creators get their hands on the game. But I think that is a thing you need to take into consideration that although the game is marketing creativity and modularity and scaling and flexi color everything, etc., there are limitations. It's like any other game. And so even though you may have, you know, been frustrated with stuff like Planet Zoo in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean that Prehistoric Kingdom is going to not have its own special issues. It may fix some things, like scaling rocks and stuff is awesome, because it gets around a lot of issues like Planet Zoo's kind of annoyance of needing to place down a hundred different types of rocks. But it's not going to fix if, you know, maybe you don't have a path type that Planet Zoo has. Unfortunately, that's the case. And so the next point I want to bring up is, well, that can all be fixed because Prehistoric Kingdom is going to have modding, which is not, it's true, but also not true. I think it's a bit of a, a misconception here. While the Prehistoric Kingdom devs have mentioned in their Kickstarter and stuff that early versions of the game had modding, it didn't mean they openly were integrating modding as a feature of their game and the devs have gone on record in saying that like while it's you know they're they may look into it it's not going to be planned anytime soon and so if you're expecting modding and stuff right out the gate that is not going to be the case either you will have some mods sort of like what we have for planet zoo or jwe right now where some developers out there are going to make stuff like a cobra tools equivalent and they are going to make tools you could use to mod but full mod integration where you're able to just import new assets and new dinosaurs and new animals is probably going to be a little bit off as well so again it's i i think you should look at the early access very similar to planet zoo's launch it was very exciting you get to play with the new pieces but don't ever get sold on what the game might be in the future when this is the product you have right now. So, because I've seen that a lot, especially with Kickstarter games or other titles and stuff where, oh, well, this will be fixed in a few years. This will be fixed down the road. And the longer the game goes on, the more you realize that game developments change over time. And so some features may need to be cut. Some features may need to change. And you need to kind of understand that that is part of the game development process. And so even though someone may have promised back in 2018 X, Y, and Z, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you get your hands on, you know, that feature in 2023 or so, it's not going to be totally different than what you're expecting. So I think that is a thing you need to take into consideration. And as far as modding goes, it'd be nice if they had modding from the get-go, but I, again, reel in your expectations if they don't have it very soon. Now, similarly, I want to talk about, this is basically targeted specifically at other content creators out there. If you make videos and stuff, um, maybe dial back your expectations about those collab series and uh, how you're going to be, you know, 
posting all these kind of crazy builds and stuff because to my knowledge and this is again the, correct me if i'm wrong if anyone has any information on this i don't believe we are going to have workshop or multiplayer support in this demo of the pre-alpha of early access i think by the time it gets to final early access we will have stuff like the ability to swap maps and stuff but i'm not sure if this build that a lot of content creators are getting very soon at the end of february maybe march or whatever if that is going to have the ability to share maps and build on other people's maps and send them back and forth over the workshop i'm not sure if that's going to be totally accessible just yet so, like I said, maybe put a pin on those, oh, we're going to make a collab series with three other channels, because you may be just playing alone for a little bit. And that's, you know, something you just need to totally consider as a possibility. Because, again, we really don't know, other than what has been shown of we, were, we are going to get mini exhibits and building and stuff, what is this demo is going to have. And so you have to take that into consideration before making kind of wide reaching plans about your channels and stuff like that. So the next thing I want to talk about is something that I'm sure a lot of people are probably aware of, but you know, should take into consideration. And that is, do you like dinosaurs? Because if you like dinosaurs, you're going to really enjoy this game. If you do not like dinosaurs, that is not going to, you know, you're not going to fill that itch if you are trying to make a zoo game and you're just not really feeling dinosaurs or Cenozoic animals. If you really like Planet Zoo be or Zoo Tycoon because it's a zoo game, dinosaurs may be cool to you as like a tertiary thing, but this game has no plans on adding extant species. If you were planning on, well, maybe they'll add a DLC down the line of regular lions and elephants and giraffes, you probably came to the wrong place. And I know that's kind of upsetting because someone like me who loves zoo games specifically, regular old zoo games, um, the Simply Zoo devs have kind of talked to a few of the uh, prehistoric kingdom devs and they have said straight out, while they do, you know understand why people would want a regular old zoo game like prehistoric kingdom the devs have little to no interest in doing that because and when you've been working on a game this long why would you want to go and make it another zoo game after this and so it, it don't expect anything like that it, this is a dinosaur builder first and foremost it is meant to compete with jurassic world evolutions it is not meant to compete with planet zoo so, which is good. If you're a Planet Zoo fan and you were worried, oh, Prehistoric Kingdom's going to steal everyone, not necessarily, because those zoo fans are going to still be loyal to the zoo game, and Planet Zoo still kind of has a monopoly over the entire genre. So, now, specifically about dinosaurs, are you Team Jurassic Park dinosaurs or Paleorealism dinosaurs? The good news is... Either way, I'm sure you'd be fine with the result. The art style has kind of been pretty consistent with trying to make cool looking dinosaurs that are sort of reminiscent of Jurassic Park's art style while also being realistic. So as an example, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, probably one of the most notable and controversial um, dinosaur depictions within the paleo community. A lot of people are, you know, b debating, do they have feathers? Do they not have feathers? And Prehistoric Kingdom kind of took it and said, okay, we're going to make the T-Rex not have feathers. And it's going to be very, you know, reminiscent of the Jurassic Park T-Rex. But we're going to have another dinosaur, which is kind of a, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name. I'll pull up a, you know, name here. But that dinosaur that is related to the T-Rex will have feathers. And so I kind of like how they've been taking some creative liberties with, okay, to make the dinosaurs feel unique and different from each other, we're going to give some feathers, some not feathers, some are going to have little scoots and others are going to have little spikes. The uh, Cenozoic animals are going to have different patternings, like the Smilodon has one that's kind of your traditional saber-toothed tiger pattern, but then others are more creative. They're kind of like a, maybe like a clouded leopard patterning and stuff like that. And I kind of appreciate that because it kind of gives a lot more variety to the animals 
and allows for a lot more creativity and kind of appeasement to those people who can't necessarily get over the idea that like something oh the my triceratops never had feathers or whatever okay we'll make a skin without quills or feathers on the triceratops and i think that is probably the way to go if you want to get the widest reach of player base so the next point that i wanted to bring up is do you enjoy planet zoo's building you're gonna like this game then because it's very similar to planet zoo's building so as i mentioned before it, it has its own little quirks and stuff and a lot of the little quirks i do think are better than planet zoo as an example you just plop down dinosaurs. There's no trade center, there's no incubator. That is amazing to me because it's very reminiscent of the user friendliness of pretty much any other zoo game that was reputable in the past. Zoo Tycoon, Zoo Empire, uh, RTC3, you know, those are awesome, you know, methods of just placing down animals so you don't have to worry about it. And I, I am glad Prehistoric Kingdom has done that. As far as building goes, very reminiscent of Planet Zoo. You have angle snap, you have rotation, you have a gizmo, you can, you know, and like I said, you have the added bonus of scaling certain objects. And I'm also glad that they didn't just make basic scaling, they actually have modular scaling where trees and stuff, if, if they're scaled upward and downward, they actually, you know, stretch the bark texture appropriately so it's not like gross and super stretched out uv wise i'm glad they did that because it looks a lot better now a thing i will mention that is kind of annoying that you know and this is where i was mentioning before it's gonna have its own quirks from what i have seen you cannot really place down individual trees exactly where you want it's more of a brush type sort of like what zoo tycoon 2 had where you paint down uh environments instead of just placing individual trees like planet zoo so you're basically going to want to use like a small brush and choose like a tropical theme to place down that kind of kapok tree instead of just going into your environment or foliage tab and placing down that same kapok tree. So that is a thing that, like I said, it's going to take some getting used to, but I don't think it'll make or break the game. So before I kind of end this video, I did also want to mention stuff that maybe this game is not gonna fix so if you're someone who has played roller coaster tycoon you've played planet zoo and zoo tycoon and uh, you know uh planet coaster and jwe and all these games and you are going to have you're just uh creatively blocked right now this is not gonna fix that creativity block it's a new game, so you're going to have a bunch of new tools at your disposal, a bunch of new items at your disposal. But if you just don't have the passion or ideas or inspiration to make something in this game, you're maybe not going to have a great time. If you are sick of making zoo habitats in Planet Zoo, Prehistoric Kingdom isn't going to change that. Because at the end of the day, it is still building those same habitats using very similar items, your standard wood and rock and uh, glass and you know, etc. And so those things aren't going to change. So take that into consideration. If you are creatively drained right now, if you have zero inspiration, this game will not fix that for you. It's a new game. That's great. But you need to understand that the game can't fix inspiration block. And so as you can be hyped for this game, but it's not going to fix that for you. And so I just wanted to like, you know, mention that b because I know a lot of other people, l myself included, sometimes feel like you can't, you, you don't know what to build or something in Planet Zoo. And that issue is probably going to persist into Prehistoric Kingdom or even any future tycoon games out there or um, at any simulation games or builders, I should mention. But what i do think is this game is going to be really good i think it needs a lot more time to properly judge the game and i think hands-on experience with the game is really going to make or break you know what people think about it but i am very excited for prehistoric kingdom and so i hope this video was kind of informative and maybe let you 
think about, you know, some features or things that maybe you've been planning or, you know, what have you. And so as much as, you know, a, a lot of people want to say Planet Zoo is dying or Planet Zoo is out the door and stuff, or JW even for that matter, there's a lot of potential with modding on the horizons for those games that are going to make this compete with Prehistoric Kingdom neck and neck. JWE, apparently, as recent as today that I'm making this, has gotten news that apparently something is on the horizons for JWE. Maybe it's JWE 2, maybe it's that new Frontier survival game, or maybe it's an expansion to JWE, but apparently there's something else coming for that game. And Planet Zoo has not stopped their DLC. And so while the four animal DLCs have kind of gotten annoying, I like to think that maybe Frontier is listening, and mod support for both games is better than ever right now. We're really close to custom animals in Planet Zoo, and JWE literally has full custom animal support as of right now. So all of those things combined, I think it's going to be a really good year for Tycoon fans, and I think it's going to be a really good year for Zoo fans. So I'm glad you guys have watched this video, and I will see you in the next one. So thank you for watching, and I am out.